If you hate getting passed when you come up to the net in tennis, then you've clicked on exactly the right video because I'm about to show you how you can anticipate what your opponent is gonna do after you come up to the net. They might choose to try to pass you down the line or cross court or maybe even lob over the top of you. And so much of it has to do with how you position yourself and where your approach shot goes. I'm gonna explain all this in a second, but the first and most important thing is understanding the basic geometry once you come up, come up to the net. And I'm just gonna spend 20 seconds on this right now. There's much more to it, but you have to remember this. Anytime you're at the net in singles, when the ball is on the left side of the court and your opponent is getting ready to hit a passing shot, then you should be positioning yourself on the same side of the court that the ball is on. So a little bit to the left side of the court when the ball is on the left. If you hit your approach shot to the right side of the court, or you hit a volley to the right side of the court, then your position needs to change over to be slightly on the right side of the court. If that sounds confusing or you don't know what I'm talking about, then I will link to a completely separate and free lesson at the end of this one so you can go check that out. But I have to get that out of the way first. So this is the first and most important part of covering the net effectively. Now let's go back to that fancy chart with all the pretty colors and I'll explain everything that's going on there. First, we're gonna talk about the stretch zone right over here, this blue section is gonna be when we stretch our opponent and they're on the run having to chase down a good approach or maybe you're a couple shots into playing at the net and you've just stretched them off the court. So they're running actively off to the side of the court and it could be a forehand or a backhand, but let's just set up a scenario here where you hit an approach shot, your opponent is having to chase the ball from the other side of the court and so as they hit their next ball, you're positioned correctly on the right side of the court, and all of their momentum is carrying them in, it's the worst arrow ever, in this direction. When that happens, A, it's much easier for them to target here than it is for them to target here. Is cross court an option? Is it possible? Yes. But when everything is moving this direction, it's much more challenging to time a swing really early and while running to the right, angle the ball to the left. It's much more likely that because all their momentum is carrying in this direction, that the ball ends up going somewhere down the line. Now, number one, you have to know your opponent's tendencies and preferences and strengths. It might be that their favorite shot in the whole world is running this way, but then angling a ball over here. And you have to figure that out over the course of your match. There are no guarantees here. Anytime you come up to the net, you have to understand that you have forced their hand. You're saying to them, I am gonna get in your face and make you make some kind of great shot right now, or else the point is gonna be over. I'm gonna put the ball away. So they're going to try to hit something nice and you have to get to know their tendencies over time. Generally speaking, in this scenario where they're stretched, look for down the line, and a lob is also possible, and again, you have to know their tendencies. Some players will lob as soon as you make it inside the service line, like the very next shot, they always lob. Well, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to get super close to the net when you put that person on the run. On the other hand, other players just love trying to hit highlight shots and they're gonna smash some kind of passing shot. In that scenario, you would want to get closer. So there is no perfect place to always be. You have to know the tendencies of your opponent. But in general, when you have them stretched, look for the line. This is much less possible. And look for the lob as well. Those are gonna be the two most high percentage or high likelihood shots that your opponent tries. The next type of situation that might happen as you make your way up towards the net is this yellow space here, which I've titled Jam. Basically, you've hit something that's really nice and deep, maybe with heavy topspin or maybe with biting slice, but you've placed it close to the baseline and you haven't really pulled them way away from the center of the court, but the ball is kind of coming right up at your opponent and they're having to either take it on the rise or you're like, pushing them and forcing them back further than what they would like to be. And so this is kind of a, a forcing scenario. Plus you're coming up towards the net and they see that you are taking their time away and taking their space away by coming forwards. In this scenario, you have to know what type of opponent that you're playing against. If they've got really quick hands 
and they like to get out in front and meet the ball way out in front, then cross court is possible. If they're not good at either of those things, then similar to the stretch shot where your opponent's getting stretched off the court, you should be leaning pretty heavily towards a down the line ball, simply because you're forcing, the, you're forcing them to take the ball early by hitting your approach so nice and deep. And so in general, tennis players tend to be late with their shots, just across the board. We tend to time things late if we're gonna miss time shots. It's not very often that we happen to be a little too early and we accidentally you know, hit a nice sharp angle. That doesn't happen a whole lot. So in a jam scenario where you've hit the ball really deep, you should be looking towards more of this side of the court and leaning a little bit away from the cross court possibility. But again, no, all, as always, all of these are gonna come down to knowing your opponents. And that's the case with the lob as well. It's tough to pick up a, basically a shot on the rise and hit a great lob. But if your opponent doesn't like nailing passing shots, they might just default to the lob. So you have to know what their preference is as far as the ratio of like passing shots to lobs. Basically, this is like being a poker player. You have to know the odds, like what's likely. In this scenario, the odds say down the line. You, you have to kind of know, okay, players are usually late. I just hit the ball deep. They're taking it on the rise. So therefore, it's most likely gonna be here. But then in addition to the odds, you also have to know your specific opponent. Do they like to be really aggressive? Do they tend to be tentative? Do they bluff a lot? You know, going back to the, the poker example. And so then you can start to catch your opponent by anticipating their play. Same thing with pass versus lob. Know their tendencies, and then you can position yourself appropriately in terms of cross, the court, cross court or down the line, and no lob or lob is very, very likely. If this video has already been helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. It helps these lessons be seen by more tennis players. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for supporting this channel. The next type of scenario here after you hit your approach shot and come forwards, or maybe it's after a volley, you've already been at the net, is a dig shot. That's where the ball lands short in the court and your opponent is forced to kind of lunge forwards and reach and kind of try to dig the ball out from a kind of an awkward short or low position. You can do this on purpose with an approach shot by kind of hitting a, a, a chopping, dying slice and then coming in behind it. Roger Federer does that all the time. He, he plays that really nicely. It might also be after like a passing shot attempt and you stretch and reach and kind of knock the ball down low and short and your opponent's having to run and stretch forwards before the ball bounces twice. When this situation occurs and your opponent is actively stretching forwards and reaching for the ball, a lob is super, super likely. Reason being, A, they're running inside the baseline, so there's not a whole lot of geometry for them to use. There's not a lot of space, practically speaking, to be able to hit the ball hard and keep it in play. And so all of a sudden, as you're running for it, you can probably relate to this. As you're running forwards and stretching and reaching downwards, you just kind of instinctively think, oh geez, I better just put up a lob. So my opponent is close to the net, they're looking for a put away, I'm below the net, how in the world am I gonna hit this over the net, hit it hard and keep it in play? And so just the geometry of that is very difficult. But number two, trying to like get any kind of body rotation and powerfully hit the ball is almost impossible when you're reaching and stretching for the ball. So that restricts your opponent's options to either the lob or if they're going to try to pass you one way or the other, it's gonna be some kind of likely open racket face kind of slice, kind of touch type of shot where they're trying to just sneak it over the net and drop it on either side past you. There's not necessarily like a down the line or a cross court that's most likely here. This is really gonna come down to opponent tendencies and strengths. Do they have nice, you know, soft, kind of touch angles, or do they kind of have stone hands and they're gonna to struggle to, to hit any kind of angle? You have to get to know your opponent a little bit here. But it's either gonna be some kind of like soft shot over the top of the net, or they're gonna to try to loft it over the top of your head with, uh, with a lob. So know your opponent here, lobs very likely, and if it's not a lob, they're probably not hitting it hard. So these are the things you wanna look for in this scenario.
If you want to be more successful coming up to the net and converting and putting away balls, make sure to get free access at EssentialTennisAcademy.com where we have tons of coaching modules that focus on all different parts of the game of tennis, including net play, like overhead success, pinpoint volleys, and short sitter solution. So go get free access at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. The fourth zone here is this green one. This is the meh space on the court. If you hit your approach here, it's not so deep that it's challenging them. It's not so short that they're reaching and having to dig it out. It's not so wide that they're stretched. And so there's really no limiting factor here. The ball is essentially landing right where me as a tennis coach would feed the ball to try to make my student comfortable. It's just coming right into their strike zone. So in this scenario, it's completely fielder's choice. Your opponent can do whatever they want with the ball. They're not gonna be super off balance. They're not gonna be super uncomfortable. They're not gonna struggle timing the shot. And so it's equal opportunity. They could just as easily hit down the line as they do cross courts. They could just as easily lob as they do drive the ball. And so now is where it's most critical to know what do they like, what are their strengths, what are their patterns. And then the only other thing you really have in, uh, in your power is to do some kind of maybe fake to one side and then cover the other side, or maybe at the last second, right as they start to swing, just pick a side. Like if it's especially weak and they have especially good passing shots, you might as well just pick a side. Because in that scenario, if you just kind of stand where you're supposed to stand and wait for them to hit the ball, they could just as easily pass you in either direction. So for me, as a, somebody who loves to play the net, a lot of times I'll just, in my head before they swing, just be like, all right, well, I'm just gonna cover this one, wait for them to kind of line up the swing, and then just go right as they start to swing forward towards the ball. Against a great passing shot player, that might be your only real option. Just give up one to be able to have a shot at, at the other one. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this, uh, this framework kind of gave you something to think about. Being able to be a good net player is a lot about just taking risk and reward, uh, rolling the dice a little bit, and, and kind of trying to anticipate and tell the future as much as possible. So my goal with this lesson was to kind of let you inside my head as somebody who loves the net and tell you kind of what I'm thinking and looking for in terms of anticipating where the ball is likely going to go. If you can add just 10% you know, uh, probability in your favor that, oh, I'm pretty sure the ball is going to go over here, your effectiveness as a net player will totally skyrocket. And so thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. And now you can click a lesson on the screen that will go really, really deep into the geometry of where to stand and how to cover the court at the net the best. So check out that lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.